Well, welcome back. As I mentioned, we have Maria and Doug here on behalf of the Grand Jury Superior Court of Orange County. Well, welcome both of you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for having us. Now, uh, we have a lot to cover, so we are most likely going to kind of break it up a little bit. We're going to talk mm -hmm. to you about sort of the grand jury process, sure. you know, how you, how you participate, and then you, I understand, have been on the grand jury three times. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but before we get to any of that, Maria, please introduce yourself to us. Sure. Thank you, Lisa. I am Maria Hernandez. I'm the assistant presiding judge for Orange County here and very privileged to do so. One of my duties is overseeing the grand jury. Okay. Um, the grand jury is something that has been with us for hundreds of years, quite frankly, if you take history. Um, it's one of the most important functions that we have in that it's one of our independent bodies for the county to oversee governance, government, agencies. Um, it has a dual purpose for us. Mm -hmm. uh, it receives our criminal indictments, but also does investigatory work where it makes recommendations. Um, fabulous opportunities. So okay. that's just a you know a little bit about me. I've been on the bench for 16 years. Wow. Been working for the county for just over 30 as a lawyer okay. first. Oh, okay. So um, it's just a wonderful place to be. Now, before you become a judge, do you actually is it a requirement for you to be on a jury? No, no. Okay. In fact, the requirement, obviously, to become a judge is that you serve as a lawyer for 10 years. Oh, okay. Um, in fact, most of the time, they don't want us on juries. Uh, lawyers kick us off jurors for, <laughs> for some reason. Um, <laughs> but would love to sit on one, but I, I get called to jury service all the time, and I report. Oh, A little oh, okay. different than our grand jury, yeah, but yeah, our yeah. petite jurors, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, the requirement for a sitting judge is 10 years of experience as a lawyer I see. through the process. Okay, excellent. And how about you, Doug? Tell us about your history. Oh, where do I start? <laughs> well, this is only a 20-minute show, okay. so you know, well, make it a little short. Yeah, my family's <laughs> lived in Orange County since 1952. Mom and wow. Dad moved here from Portland, Oregon. Okay. And um, for me, having grown up in the county, I thought I knew the county. Mm -hmm. But my time on the grand jury gives me an opportunity to say, no, I didn't. And oh. the getting into the back stories, if you will, the behind the scenes aspects of the county is a real eye opener because now you get to understand that Orange County is a very dynamic county. We're, mm -hmm. we're the third largest in the state of California and the sixth largest in the United States as far as population goes. Right. And our, you know, we start looking at the number of registered voters we've got in the county and the gross domestic product of the county. Mm -hmm. We basically are a state unto itself based yeah. for just the yeah. dynamics of the county. So, right. so it's, I, I've worked in the county okay. pretty much all of my life. Okay, for, but what were you doing? Well, my last job, I was 15 years in uh, loss control and risk assessment okay. for insurance companies. So I traveled okay. all over the Western United States evaluating okay. companies okay. for their risks. Perfect. Which is part of the investigation of the grand jury. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so that's interesting because you know when you when you talk to people about being on a grand jury, yeah. you know they oh I don't have enough experience or I don't have this or I don't have that. But technically, that's not the case, and we'll we'll get to that in mm -hmm. just a bit. So Maria, tell me why the grand jury is so important. Oh my goodness, it serves functions that um, are opportunities for our citizens that they would never otherwise have. Mm -hmm. And for us to be able to investigate, as I said, the governance of the running of our county, to Doug's point, our court is the you know third largest here in California, but the sixth largest in the entire country. Mm -hmm. um, with over three million folks in our county, we're larger than I think 20, 20 plus states in the United States. Okay. So they're looking and investigating into whether that be the jail system, uh, our transit system, um, how we house our children, our youth at risk, our most vulnerable populations. Mm -hmm. The investigatory work they do is just bar none to anywhere else in the state. And, and something I want to comment on, Lisa, is that we have a function that's called a dual function. When we sit our grand jury, they sit and hear criminal indictments, mm -hmm. but they also do the civil side of it, which is okay. the civil investigation, where I believe, and I could be corrected on this, but I believe we're only one of two counties that mm -hmm. has a dual grand jury right now. I see. Mm -hmm. And during the pandemic even, our grand jury continued to meet. Of course, we made sure all of our um, precautionary measures were taken. Right. Um, but they rendered all of their investigations. They completed them. Mm -hmm. um, everything was done, and that's something that nowhere else in the state occurred. You know, so for instance, now, you know, I, 
I've heard of the grand jury, but most people probably don't mm -hmm. know what you just said about being a watchdog, but also, you know, kind of overseeing a lot of yes. different things. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're just a juror, well, you are assigned to a single case, One and case. you probably don't do any of that research. Is that you correct? You do not. No. no. Okay. And in fact, if you sit on our other jurors, which are so important, so I also want to just kind of give kudos to Orange County, even during this pandemic period, mm -hmm. we're seeing a yield rate that's higher probably than anywhere else in the state as far as jurors who are coming oh. to court to serve as jurors. Okay. But to your point, Lisa, our jurors there, they sit one case. The only evidence they consider is that which is presented to them. Yes. Okay. They can, in fact, they're instructed they can't go outside of what the record is. Gotcha. Doug can speak to the fact the independent investigation mm -hmm. and the autonomy that they have and the authority that they have is mm -hmm. far reaching and the recommendations okay. are amazing and they're they're statutorily codified as far as mm -hmm. folks being able to respond to recommendations or conclusions. Right. Okay, well good and we, we will get to that in just a minute. Uh, kind of identify a, a little bit more than what you've given us about sort of run us down the uh, responsibilities that a grand juror does beyond what you've just said? So that question is probably best okay. with Doug because he has been there and he can tell okay. you actually what, what a day looks like, what a week looks like mm -hmm. for a particular grand juror. So All I'd right, like to perfect. defer that to Doug. Go right ahead. All right. Um, on a typical day, the, the jury will usually come in at about 9 o'clock in the morning and the, there's six investigative units, subunits within the grand jury. So one looks at cities, all 34, county operations, health and human services, which became a report in 2021 on the response to the pandemic mm -hmm. for a health care agency. Uh, we have a criminal justice group and uh, another group that's <laughs> kind of our catch-all. We call it special issues and ethics. So if it doesn't mm -hmm. fit into one of those other six buckets, mm -hmm. they kind of wind up uh, getting caught with it. But the day-to-day -day activities you select a particular topic of investigation. Uh, we call in uh, people from these different agencies or we will go to their site and actually do some investigative work. We have the power to subpoena documents if we need. Mm -hmm. And uh, people are under oath, so whatever they sh share with us is confidential. We can't talk about it, they can't talk about it. The only report that is out there is the final document that we publish. And that becomes a matter of public record and recommendations also become a matter of public record. So th there's an accountability for the agency then to respond, which then also becomes a matter of public record. So if we make a recommendation and uh, there is a, a, a serious need to fix something in a particular agency, but they don't address that, something, somewhere down the line, if it comes back later and bites them, you were, you were on the record, you were notified that this had to be fixed and yet you didn't do it. So there's the public then can hold them accountable. So that, that is used as evidence at some point? It, it very well could be, and okay. I will say that the reports Doug's or Doug is speaking to, they're on our website, which if mm. anybody would like to see, if you were to click on our website, you can see all of the annual reports. They are very comprehensive and robust. Okay. And again, to Doug's point, there's an opportunity for the agencies, whether it's a city, municipality, to respond. Okay. Let's say if this grand jury committee says, we think that this is going, going great here, but there's some things that really should be stepped up a bit. Here's our recommendations. That agency can respond back and, in fact, has a time period to reply back to okay. us. Um, but those reports, again, then go public and everybody can see. And I would strongly recommend anybody who's watching mm -hmm. this, the work they put into it is yeah. really amazing. Well, it sounds like a job. It, it is, and I'll uh, yeah. speak to that a little so, bit. So how can you do it if you have, if you're, if you have a job, how could, you, per, how could you do it at the same time? It's interesting because those who are federal employees, if you're working for the post office or, or, or a federal agency, they will actually give you time off to do this. Oh. And we've had some people who were self-employed who were financial planners, so they managed to squeeze it in. Okay. Primarily you're looking for people who have, I would say, the desire, first and foremost, to be of service to your community and to be of service to your county. Mm -hmm. But you can carve out some time, you know, as, as a retiree, yeah. uh, you know, that's, that's our gold mine right there. Right. But it, sure. the, the people who are of, maybe want to take a gap year in, in school. And, and if you were in a, say for instance, in a, yes. a political science track, poli-sci or government track, 
take a gap year and join the grand jury, uh -huh. and it would be phenomenal because now you get down into the weeds of government as opposed to just being hypothetical and textbook. Okay. Okay. How close does uh, the, well, you said you oversee them, so how close do they get to work with you? So I have communication, especially with our four person, whoever that might be, um, and I'll, of course we have liaisons, and then I try to visit with them periodically just to kind of check in, mm -hmm. how you doing, what do you need, anything we can do to accommodate. But their proceedings are secret as well, as you know, and their investigations, to Doug's mm -hmm. point, that mm -hmm. it's maintained confidentially until they publish their reports. Okay. So we keep the confidentiality and the protections of our grandeur at, at the highest level. Okay. Um, we were kind of kidding a little bit about it. Um, you know, I have 144 judicial officers that I work with. Probably less than 10 know where they're housed and exactly where they sit every day when they come ah, in. Okay. Um, so we keep them in a very secure place, okay. making sure that their needs are met. Mm -hmm. um, so I have interaction, Lisa, but not, like I said, this is something, they're an independent mm -hmm. investigatory body, um, and they'll reach out to me if they need something mm -hmm. and, and with general check-ins. And there's training, I assume. Yes, yes ma'am. Uh, there is four days of orientation that we start with for the select panel and that would include those who are going to be the 19 seated jurors and also the alternates. So if a seated juror for health reasons or family reasons has to, to leave, there's an alternate who's trained ready to step into that spot immediately. Okay. And so there's four days of training and we do some of that training with the California Grand Jury Association who talks about the investigating process and the, and the, the in, digging down into the day to day and then our last day and a half is basically familiarization with Orange County and the particulars of Orange County, the, the cities, the special districts, all of the mm -hmm. agencies that are part of the purview then for the grand jury to investigate. Now, of course, this is not uh, unpaid. I mean, they do get a stipend of some sort. They do. Um, we're working on, we'd like to see that to be more, but it is yeah. a $50 a day stipend. They also receive parking reimbursement, mileage reimbursement okay. and such and per diem. Um, but yes, we, you know, this is through the county. So we're hoping to see an increase for them in light of the work that they do. But it's, it's certainly not a salary that one would want yeah. to live mm -hmm. off of at $50 a day. No, but at least it's, it's something, right? Yes. It's a, right. For accommodating their, their time. Let me ask you this. Now, I know you mentioned that they have a particular location that they can go to. Can they work out of their house? Yes. Okay. We the pandemic has been sort of a mixed blessing for us mm -hmm. because we had to adapt very quickly. And so we have secure laptops. Yes. So you can do research work at home as though you were actually working oh, from your good. computer mm -hmm at That's the court. Great. So yes. there's all of these different ways that okay. you can do that. And Excellent. during the pandemic, it was very interesting for us because we actually did some indictments with witnesses coming in remotely, mm -hmm. which normally you would have the witness in person right. in front of you. So right. we, the court adapted to the pandemic and we kept moving with, you know, district attorney and even the attorney general bringing right. us indictments. So we, we kept it moving all the way down the line. Okay, now a couple of questions about requirements. So you mentioned age really, as long as you're over 18 years of Correct. age. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the other uh, particulars that you need to make sure? Resident of Orange County, mm -hmm. right? Um, gosh, we're, <laughs> we're seeking diversity. So okay. um, yeah, there's not a, a lot of limitations as you, as you pointed out. Mm -hmm. um, folks who can fit it in, even if they're working, we would love to have that. But mm -hmm. we also remind them it's a commitment. It's a good 30 hours a week, sometimes mm -hmm. more. Monday through Thursday with a Friday, sometimes they work half, half days. days. Okay. Um, and we certainly have breaks of, they decide that like a two week vacation period in the holidays, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a commitment. So we right. want folks to know that. So I guess I would say that is the limitation that it's an expectation of you're gonna be there every week. Now, if somebody was um, you know, in a wheelchair or something, can they still do it? Yes. Absolutely. Okay, good. Absolutely, we're fully compliant with ADA. Okay. And to your question earlier on remote capabilities, silver lining from the pandemic has allowed us to create secured servers. The county has provided all of the secured laptops so that they can work mm -hmm. remotely, right. um, which has really helped out tremendously, especially now that we're seeing the surge right now yeah. so that we can accommodate and kind of pivot as I call as necessary. Well, it was a huge change. I mean, it was definitely, yeah. like you said, a big transition mm -hmm. where it's probably been a long time coming. Unfortunately, it, it took the pandemic for everybody to realize yeah. that, right? right? So unfortunately, okay, before we go, let's talk about how you become uh, a participant. What is some of the first things they need to know? So one of the things, and I think you have it up on the screen and we can mm -hmm. certainly provide additional information. 
We have online applications which are tremendously helpful. Okay. So they can literally go to the Superior Court website, go to the grand jury, click on an application, and they can apply right online. So they can fill it out online. They don't yes. have to print it and bring no. it or send it. Okay, great. But right. I do have folks that go, I don't want to do that. I'd rather just do old school. I'd like to fill it out <laughs> and write it in or type it in. Okay. We have that ability as well to send okay. out applications and we can make okay. those available. Are they available now? Yeah, yes. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Okay, now. Okay, and what is the deadline? Deadline's going to be mid-January, so we're okay. working through our pandemic. And again, you know, we're, we're flexible, but right now we have a deadline for mid-January. Mm -hmm. We'll have an orientation in February. Okay. Um, but again, we want to be accommodating and reach out to as many people who want and who are interested to be able to apply. We can assist you with applying if you run into some issues on online how to do it, Great. we're happy to walk you through And there's it. a phone number for them to call yes. if they need help. Mm -hmm. Everything so I think what, is up there as well. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. uh, that's the grand jury hotline at 657-622-6747. And um, they can call if they need help filling that out. Or really Absolutely. just call if they yeah. have any questions. Anything. Right. Okay, all right. One other thing is, uh, when do you make your decision? So what we will do is I have a grand jury committee. Then once the applications are all in, we do a vetting of all of those applications. Okay. And sometimes we have hundreds of applications. Okay. And we're hoping that will happen again this year so that we had that wide variety. Um, and then I have a group of judicial officers on this committee and okay. they take a look. And then in February, March, we start ranking them as mm -hmm. far as groups and ultimately have uh, an end date of, we know we have to get them sworn in for July. Yeah. So yeah. there's a lot of things that have to be done in the meantime, background checks and such. Sure. But we're really pushing to get those applications in by January so we can start the vetting process. So January 14th. So they have a couple of weeks. Sure. Yep. Um, perfect. One last thing, tell me why someone would want to be a grand juror, especially three times. <laughs> oh. And I didn't pay him extra for this. I was going to say, I see you slipping some cash. <laughs> no, no, no. Later, okay. <laughs> no, no, yeah. For me, it was really interesting because I had an old friend who had served on the grand jury many years ago, and he was really excited about it. And I thought, okay, when I retire, I mean, I, I've worked in a variety of businesses, I've, I've done a lot of different oddball jobs. This sounds like just one more oddball job that I can get into, <laughs> yeah. but, but, but that, it, that actually serves the community that I live in. Yeah. And I, I started looking at, at some of the reports that they had done, and one thing that really impressed me was, you know, I, this is a give back to your community. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, we've is. reaped the benefits of being in Orange County for so many years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why not give it back a little bit? Pay it yeah. forward for somebody else. Make the county a better place to live for the next couple of generations. So, Perfect. you know, step in and, and join the grand jury. It's just like another little volunteer opportunity yeah. for you to do um, mm -hmm. if you are of what you've just mentioned, mm -hmm. all of the requirements. So, yeah. mm -hmm. thank you both so much. It was Thanks very interesting. Yeah. And good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Now, if you want more information about all of this, you want to go to the ocgrandjury.org or you can contact them at 657-622-6747 and the application is due by January 14th. We'll be right back.